Hi guys, so it's me again, Colin, with another, yet another guitar video, another unboxing this time. Uh, and you know what it is, it's the Harley Benton um, Les Paul copy, the white Harley Benton Les Paul copy. It took a bit longer to arrive than I expected, but it's here, the box is here. So if you want to skip down to the individual, you know, the sound examples, there'll be timestamps at the bottom. You can skip onto the, all that stuff. And I'll put a link in somewhere about that previous video I made about, about my experience with Les Pauls in general. But this time it's uh, the Harley Benton uh, one. We'll see what it looks like and what it sounds like. See you in a minute. So here it is, the magic box of the B-Stock uh, Le white Les Paul. Um, I'm going to have to um, undo it with my uh, with one hand again, back in a moment. So the box is open. Let's see how the package, because I'm curious. Good enough box. Oh yeah, the, the wonderful crinkly stuff. Lots of, lots of crinkly stuff. Oh, and it is in a box. I was wondering if it would be in a box or not. There's a package in the cereal. Nothing else in there, just the the um, the white guitar. I'll tell you one thing, it's heavy. Right, we've got some uh, scissors or something to cut the tape and see what's inside. Okay, so I've cut the tape off. It's it's labelled as a, a return, B stock. And I'll we'll see what it looks like. Well, for return, it's been very tidily repacked, that's for sure. Extremely tidily repacked, even with the silica bag on the top there. Right, so let's get, get it out and see what it looks like. It certainly looks very tidy like this. Well, this is impossible to do with one hand, but I wanted to show you the headstock and everything in here. I quite like the styling they've chosen. Obviously, it is it's pretty Gibson-like, but it's just slightly different. But I, I quite like the headstock of this thing. I'm going to have to uh, unpack it a bit more with two hands, so you have to wait a minute. Or well, one day I'll buy a, a clamp for this camera. So there we have it. It looks pretty tidy, and indeed everything is like it should be, protected with little bits of foam and plastic. And you get the, the lead as well, everything. It's really, at the moment, it looks pretty tidy. We have a good proper inspection. It's still got the plastic on the pickups I've seen. Everything kind of looks like it should. What I do notice immediately is the quality of the hardware is a bit different than more expensive guitars. This is, you know, the edges here, it's just slightly rougher machined. It's not quite as, well, rounded off. So I'll, sh I'll compare this onto with other guitars, show what I mean, but yeah, I can see Already, it's not exactly an expensive guitar. Something about the way it's it's built does make it look a bit different than a more expensive thing. Okay, I'll I'll show you what I mean probably with an example of a different guitar. It, not that it's bad. Don't don't get me wrong. At the moment, I still think it looks like a cool white Les Paul, and I haven't even heard the thing yet. So we're going to plug it in and see what we think of it. It's very 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 very. I don't know what you call it that wood it's very smooth it's not like regular rosewood i'll look up the specs what's in there frets here seem quite reasonable not sharp okay we'll take it out and get it plugged in and see what it sounds like i thought i'd show the back of the guitar as well you know the regular plates where the everything goes Nothing flash. I do see one slight blemish, well, maybe two slight blemishes here. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. Slight marks in the finish. Maybe they clean off. If that's it, then well, not much reason to return. Neck looks fine. Some stickers still on the headstock. And the binding looks fine. I, I heard some people with slight blemishes or marks in the binding, slight imperfections in the binding. I don't see anything at the moment with it. I think there's specs you see are dust. Binding looks fine. Controls look fine. Yeah. Pit guard looks, like I said, everything, you, you do see it's kind of cheap, if you get what I mean. But yeah, that's what, that's what you pay for. 
So here's some close-ups of the guitar, and I'm going to kind of go at the headstock and show you what I've found or see about the guitar just by uh, taking out the packaging and tuning it up and what I think of it. First of all, tuners uh, seem to work fine, but they do feel a bit cheap. Uh, it's hard to describe it in the words, but they feel a bit light, if you know what I mean. This this doesn't feel very massive, if you know what I mean, very, very, very heavy at all. The relatively cheap tuners, we'll see how it keeps in tune. The guitar had been tuned before it was packed, or speaking of before it was packed, uh, I noticed I got this quality control thing from Tomon, which means it didn't just like get shipped directly from the manufacturing to me. There was an inspection of the instrument, which is which is good to see they do that. Um, on the headstock for the rest, no problems. Everything looks fine, really good. Um, on the fretboard, the couple of things I want to mention: this, the the fretboard, sorry, fretboard wood. I looked at it; it's a bit a bit strange. It's very very uh, dense, very very smooth, a bit dry. Uh, I looked on the spec, it's called black wood, whatever that is, I'm not quite sure. It's not regular rosewood kind of texture. It feels really quite, yeah, very, very um, smooth and quite dense. I wasn't even sure if it was a kind of, well, yeah, I'm not quite sure what the material is. The other thing I want to show you is this sound. On some frets, more than others, they're not, they're not, they're not polished. Get what I mean? So, it could do with a fret polish. Not a big deal. They're not really, really rough. Oh, by the way, the edges seem fine. There's no uh, bits sticking out at the end. They're, they're not completely smoothed off in every place, but there's very, very usable um, uh, fret ends. But they could do with a polish. I might replace the strings at some point. Um, um, Moisturise or, or, or um, put some wax onto the fingerboard and polish the frets because it, it would play a lot better by that i haven't played it much yet. i haven't plugged it in yet i've just have to use it like um acoustically fine the action's a bit high i look down the neck it looks straight it looks uh very tidy i don't think I need to adjust the neck tension at all i will uh, try lowering the string height it's really quite high at the moment yeah really quite high so going on to the body anything that i've did noticed to start off with let's say one thing the switch Feels a bit kind of loose. In its position, it's fine. You know, that's quite stable. Once in the middle position, feels a bit loose. Some of my other guitars are not quite that loose. So, I'm comparing, for example, to another Harley Benton guitar I've got, um, that Jazzmaster copy, the switch on there is a bit more solid. So, different kind of switch anyway. But uh, we'll see how it well or it works when it's plugged in for the sound. The um, scratch plate, I've noticed, is a single-ply scratch plate. It hasn't got on the Epiphone version of this guitar, for example. It's got a multiple-layered uh, um, scratch plate. This is a single-ply black. Fine, nothing wrong with that. Pickups look okay. This one looks a bit low. I might increase the height of it, or maybe lower the height of this one. We'll see about the volumes. The bridge and the stop bar, to be honest, I don't know if it comes out in this picture very well, but it looks... A bit cheap, to be honest. You know, you can see the the screw heads. I think someone adjusted it with the wrong set of screwdriver at some point. Slightly, it's not as as polished. It's it's machined and then not polished. I don't think it's going to come out very easily with the picture, to be honest. But I'll, I'll show you a picture of a different guitar bridge, an Epiphone one, for example, and you see, yeah, this one does look a bit cheap. Same with this stop bar. It just looks a bit. Yet yeah, not, not slightly rounded off or um, as, as smooth, if you get what I mean. For the rest, no marks on the, on, the, on the body whatsoever. The paint job is perfect from what I can see. There are a couple of marks somewhere in the binding, tiny, tiny details. So look, see that speck in there? That's actually in the, in the binding. Also notice the coloration of this point, if I turn a guitar onto its side, it's got a slightly different color in that, in that point there. But these are tiny details, yeah. Yeah, but for the rest, it's fine. I'll show you the back. Let me just swap it over carefully. I'll lower it down. Oh yeah, there was one thing on the back I want to show you here. Also, a couple of very, very, very tiny marks in which maybe they'll clean out. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Back of the neck is nicely rounded off. I don't usually come this far of the neck very often. The guitar, anyway, so it's fine. And then going up the neck, everything looks perfect. And indeed, the stickers of the tuners and the quality control is passed. Uh, yeah, as I said, they just feel a little bit 
a little bit light but if they stay in tune then i'm not going to be changing them that's uh pretty much for sure um that's what it looks like and like i say it's for the 150 euros it looks a very nice guitar it it doesn't look like an expensive guitar i've seen some videos comparing it to really expensive ones you, you can't compare it to an expensive guitar i'd quite like to compare this to the epiphone version to see is it is it that much better my epiphone firebird is very much well a step higher in quality to put it that way um but it's a very big price difference because the epiphone version of this is also well above 600 euros and this was 100 less than 150 euros delivered to my house so we're going to get some um sound examples of it I might lower the bridge first slightly to get the the um, uh, string height a bit better and check the intonation. It was pretty close an in intonation out of the box. I'm impressed with with the setup of it in that it's it's playable at the moment. The only thing I would like is slightly lower the bridge and the uh, scratchy scratchy yeah things yeah it, it's it's a pity. Uh, I realised that's a bit of work to get it done, which adds cost to the guitar. But I can do that when I uh, when I decide to. First of all. Let's plug it in and see what the thing actually sounds like. It looks cool, doesn't it? I'll sort of show you a comparison of the different hardware. In a particular, I noticed it when I looked at the bridge on this guitar. It just looks, it, it looks fine, you know, it's well machined, but it looks a bit different than um, slightly more expensive guitars. So to compare it next to it, I've got the Firebird, this is um, the Epiphone Firebird. And I don't know if it comes out in the camera so well, but there's something about the way the bridge elements are, are just slightly better looking. Oh, this is the um, kind of fake Bigsby, if you get what I mean, the Duesenberg Les Trem system, but also this is more expensive hardware. This is actually, uh, this this unit is about 100 euros. This guitar was 150 euros. So, so that's maybe not really comparable. This does look a bit cheaper, um, but it's okay. Also, the, the stop bar, it just looks a bit cheaper. It works fine. By the way, I've used this just now. I'm going to make some sound samples so you can all hear it too. It's a nice sounding guitar. Uh, I'm going to be comparing also the sounds of these pickups to uh, another couple of guitars. I might use the Firebird, actually. Yeah, it's it's not. this is not a humbucker in the Firebird. It's a different uh, design. But it would be interesting to hear the sound difference between different guitars, you know, what this Les Paul sounds like. So we're doing that as well. Uh, it stays in tune. It plays well without even adjusting the string height. It's, it's very playable immediately out of the box. So that's a good thing. OK, guys. It's me again. Hi, guys. This is what the Les Paul sounds like through a Box 8030 cranked a little bit. Um... <laughs>
do I think of it? It's a, for 150 euros, this is a fantastic guitar. I'm, uh, I'm probably gonna get a different one to get an idea of what's a humbucker sound from a different guitar. But this is from the Harley Benton. This is um, not treated in any way. I haven't adjusted anything since I got it. I ha the neck was straight. I think the intonation is a fraction off, but hardly. I still think I can get the action a bit lower by just lowering the bridge. But stock out of the box, it's nice. <laughs> What, what, what else do you want from a Les Paul? Anyway, anyway, that's enough of this one. I'm going to try a different guitar. Let's just stop this and swap guitars for a second. Okay, here's a comparison, a, uh, a Gordon Smith, kind of, it's a GS 1.5 or yeah, yeah, an older Gordon Smith guitar. Um, it's only got a humbucker in the back, so I didn't call it front, so I put it on the back pickup. I've rolled the tone slightly off, because this is a really hot pickup. Same volume settings on the amp, but a different guitar. But give you an idea. about that Harley Benton guitar is the pickups are not the hottest pickups in the world uh, like yeah this has got a high output but I knew that already to be honest and it's got a high output humbucker on this thing so it's 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 actually a cool guitar I'm probably going to finish this video separately but it was interesting comparing the two guitars now uh, I knew this one has got a higher output um, but that Harley Benton it plays nice the this has got a very slim neck the Harley Benton's got a thicker neck I might show you some other pictures of it later on, but you get an idea. So let me know what you think of this guitar. It's kind of, it's, it looks fantastic. Um, it'll show this is going to be great. I've got some ideas of songs. I really want to get the last Paul out into a nice flashy white guitar. Very, very playable. Um, it's, it's good. There's more expensive guitars. And you can tell it's a cheap guitar, but it plays nice. It's comfortable. Uh, I'm not worried about getting it a bit scratched, for example. It, it's... You know, it's not that that expensive. If I need to repair it, I can do stuff. Personally, I wouldn't go around upgrading it that much. Like I said, the pickup's got a lower output. Uh, I think they're fine to use, turn the amp a bit. You've got no problem whatsoever. It's still it's still a big sound. Uh, I think if you start doing the upgrading pickups and tuners, for example, which are probably the two things I think of on this guitar to do, apart from the polishing of the frets, which is just a hand, hand work, but the upgrading but then you're getting into probably the price categories of some of the epiphones which i think might be already out of the box as good as that upgraded harley benton so it's up to you i'm not planning to upgrade it until anything breaks which uh i i don't expect will be happening fast with this thing the other harley benton i've got the jazz master is playing fine gets through gigs without a problem at all and it's got a nice sound too i might actually compare the two in a separate video we'll see about that one but for anyway for now yeah, you've seen it. I'll grab it back now. You can see it once more. So you've got it. The Harley Benton Les Paul copy. What do I think of it? I think it's a good guitar, basically. It's very, very uh, nice to play. It's, uh, if you're not familiar with it, a Les Paul is a bit heavy. This, is, this is, feels reasonably heavy to me. It's certainly heavier than the Jazzmaster, uh, which I've got from Harley Benton. Um, but I do like the finish of it. It's, it's really a really cool looking guitar. It's comfortable, it plays well. Neck, to me, feels a bit chunky, but I like that. I don't mind that at all. It feels a nice thing to play. So if you're looking for a cheap guitar, this is a good one. If you're looking for that name on the headstock, a bit different. If you don't like that hard look, it's what it is. You could, you could paint it, I suppose, if you wanted to. But I'm happy with the way it is. I'm really uh, thinking it's a good, fun guitar to take around. 
to the jam sessions, to a gig somewhere and just have a bit of fun with it and be, uh, be a bit flashy with it. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Have a great afternoon or evening. It's nighttime here, whatever. Uh, great day, everybody. Uh, take care. See you in the next video. Bye for now.